What do you think about her presentation today? Noni was wonderful. She had first-hand experiences, and what better person than her to tell what it's like living under totalitarianism or Islamism, actually, in the Arabic world. And what's your concern about the use of the term Islamophobia? Well, first, we have to know what the definition of Islamophobia is. Phobia is an irrational fear. And our fear of Islam is not irrational. It's a very real fear, especially since 9-11. So how can anyone call us Islamophobes when there is no such thing? If our fear was irrational, that would be fine. But we are very concerned, very fearful, and particularly since 9-11 and since then many, many times since many of the other attacks that are coming our way. What does Islamophobia uh uh, imply when it's used, do you think it's used to, to silence critics of, uh, of Islamic radicalism? I think it's used to accuse us of any name and people just shut down when they're called certain names and it's a way to uh, keep us quiet. Not me, but most people. Is it fair to uh, uh, criticize Islam for the, uh, for the acts of a few extremists who act uh, in Islam's name? Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of radicals, and it's not a few, because if you take only 10% of the Islamic world, the Muslims, of about 1.4 billion, that's not a small number. When it comes to percentage, 10%, which is very conservative, may be small, but 140, 150 million people is not a small number. And at the same time, many of the people who are radical, they're the vocal ones. The moderate secular ones are not vocal, and sometimes they may be in silent support as well. You mean people who are moderate Muslims today could be at some point? Moderate is a very interesting word. There is no such thing as moderate. There's more secular Muslims, but it depends. I think there's a very big difference practicing Islam in this country or the free Western world or in the Islamic world. In the free world, you can actually separate Islam from the religion and the political ideology. But in the Muslim world, there is no such thing. There's one way and Sharia is the way. You come from uh, Hungary, do you? Yes, I come from Hungary, a different totalitarian country, and when I speak of experiences it's from first-hand experience and really having lived it I always tell people when they try to shut me down I'm not doing this speaking from a book or something I've studied and learned but I'm speaking from first-hand experience living under the totalitarianism which is now no picnic for anybody and, and, and I don't wish it on anyone and what do you recognize within Islam that uh, uh, brings up your uh, familiarity with the totalitarian communism? Well, Islam and socialism are very similar because they have no, they don't give rights to people and from a centralized government everybody tells you what to do and how to do it. And that's really the main uh, similarity, the totalitarianism. It tells you what to do, what to think, how to dress, how to live and what to say and what not to say. Is that what you fear that Islam is bringing to the West? Unfortunately, it is. And being that I'm a naturalized American, I always say, I came here, I wanted to assimilate, become a proud, grateful American. I never wanted my way to be imposed on others. Whereas the new immigrants come and they want to impose their way on us. And that doesn't work for me.